Welcome to RLCS Overtime, ladies and gentlemen. Your one-stop shop for all things RLCS and Rocket League Esports. I'm your host, Wave Punk, on a findable carpet, and Quinn Lobdell, and this is the Grand World Champions Finals Recap Show. That's what we're going to be doing here. Hold on, I thought I had a question, Quinn. Oh, yeah? Okay, so... Sure, you, you've, you've, I'll humor you. You've lived life under two real people names. <laughs> okay. Which, which last name has been harder for people to spell? Because your real last name is, is kind of... Easily my real last name. Yeah? Beruzzi? Yeah, because I mean, Lobdell, I've never heard of a Lobdell, but Beruzzi is... Yeah, but Lobdell rolls off the top. Yeah. So does Beruzzi. If I hadn't seen your last name, I would legitimately have not a clue how to begin. Like, my name's easy. Most people Beruzzi's who... Beruzzi's like, like hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Like, it's like spelled nothing like it looks. I don't know. Except it starts with a B, I thought you it. meant, like, Beruzzi sounded like an hors d'oeuvre. No, it's, like, just, it's just like... Just, weird I'm stuff. pretty sure yeah. my name is word. spelled normally. <laughs> Beruzzi? Beruzzi's not a... Nor There's nothing normal about Sorry, that. Sorry, I don't name. have, like, brown as a last if name. If you misspelled my name, then you didn't <laughs> like, make it through most kindergarten. Most generic name possible. <laughs> okay, oh. so the show is not about Quinn, despite what you might think from all of these few moments. Let's look at the bracket and how things panned out at the World Championships. It was monstrous. Ten teams showed up to compete for that title of World Champion. You can see it was Gale Force and Method there in the finals, but so much action to get to that point. And for one of the first times in my life, I had absolutely no idea how a single matchup was going mm. to go. After day one, we looked at day two matchups, and I still had no idea. After day two, I looked at day three matchups, and still just as clueless, which makes it so much more exciting for me in the booth because I just genuinely look at every matchup as this could go either way, and it's so much fun. Yeah, I think you could actually hear that me during that Chiefs I energy I with you match. every game. Yeah, okay, ha, ha. <laughs> Anyways, the Chiefs energy match, I mean, there were so many upsets, really. We talk about how this was the most stacked RLCS. It didn't stop that, the upsets from happening. No. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. It was the most stacked, and like, but even, even with the OCE teams, like everything, everyone was talking about like most stacked land. Everyone's talking about North American Europe and how great those two regions are. And then Chiefs shows up and takes all of our North American sweethearts either to, to like a huge series or upsetting NRG in the lower mm -hmm. bracket was absolutely bonkers. We're going to start off here. First match of the day on day number one, G2 versus Chiefs. Went all the way to five games. G2 having to play tight against this top dog roster from OCE. And the thing is, coming into this, G2 has been has missed out on land so many times, right? And so we said this is a, a moment for redemption for them, but they've always had that kind of on and off feel. And because we hadn't gotten to see them play in the rest of land, we also had questions about Chiefs, I feel like, with this match, because it's like, oh, is G2 just off, or were they on? Is Chiefs just really that good, you know? I mean, that's one of the most difficult things when you're watching a game of Rocket League, it's, you know, are both of these teams really giving it their all? Is one of them really suffering? You can always look at it and find the mistakes here and there, but you never know, are these mistakes being forced upon them? Or are, you know, sometimes it's obvious. Like, okay, yes, sure. this team's really falling apart on defense. But oftentimes, you know, mistakes are pulled out of you because this other team is performing yeah. so well. Absolutely, especially on such a high pressure stage like yeah. RLCS, you do see a lot more mistakes happening. And especially with this Chiefs G2 match, you saw G2 really struggling those first two games, and out of nowhere, they picked it back up and just capitalized on Chiefs kind of crumbling. I mean, that was I mean that was huge, and a lot of the crowd was obviously behind G2. Mm -hmm. Kronovi just has a huge, you know, I guess just fan base in general. Everyone loves watching Kronovi play. First time he's been back since he won in season one, so that was really Welcome big. Back. So if you're the Chiefs, I mean, to go against a North American team, that's not the one you particularly want to go against. You've already got the crowd kind of against you right sure. off the bat. You know, last season, everyone kind of looked down on you as a region, which I know frustrated a lot of people in general. And they definitely overperformed what we expected, and they did it again mm -hmm. this season, even right off the bat going to Game 5 against G2. Absolutely. I mean, it's, 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 it's time to stop doubting. Time to stop yeah. doubting the OCE region. Same thing goes for Ghosts. It's the next thing we want to talk about here. That was just kind of the story of the whole, the whole, the whole land, I felt like, with Ghosts, was just taking that Lethemir tweet and just being like, this is who they are. A team that nobody gives any credit, despite being one of the top four in North America and going a long distance here in this match as they went up against Mocket Esports, going to full five games and taking the victory there. Mocket, a team that absolutely lit up at the right time at the end of league play, struggling here on day number one against Ghost. Yeah, really. Mocket is one of those teams that's so good at knocking out teams which we may consider ranked below them or lesser teams if you will and to see ghosts just come out like guns blazing mm. and really just take it to mock it over this entire series I thought that was really impressive I mean I've heard a lot of different opinions when I got to speak to a lot of the players about what they thought about each other uh, if you caught that at land you know you got to hear them all kind of speak on each other's team mm -hmm. and when they all talked about ghosts it was a lot of the you don't really look at them. Like a lot of teams don't really look at them as a threat. They don't study them. And Ghost also plays just a tiny bit off meta. They don't conform to the to the perfect contest everything. Let's right, do everything right, we right. need to. They have interesting roles that most players have kind of veered from. 
you know, people don't really follow those rules with classics, and Leathermere always up so far with Zane Jackie in support, which you don't see usually as much as they do the three man generally. Um, so I think between people not paying attention to them and just their kind of interesting style of play, they catch a lot of teams off guard, and that they should it all season. Well, this will be interesting because moving forward, I don't think anybody's going to be doubting Ghost anymore. These guys have been very, very strong. They've continued to stay strong after the land performance. So I think at this point, people are going to start looking at them, and they can't keep riding that just that wave of, oh, nobody's expecting anything out of us. Now they are considered one of the best in North America, and we'll see how they perform. But moving on to day number two, NRG versus Chiefs, one of the most storied matches of the tournament because of how it went down. It went all five games, but Chiefs able to take the victory over the North American dynasty and it was at this point that they answered the question we had with the Chiefs versus G2 match is Chiefs really on fire right now and they answered it with an emphatic yes. Yeah, it was just incredible to see the Chiefs play so well all together like and we saw Trippy come through with so many clutch mm. to his team. Shake was just an offensive monster, and Torso is doing such a good job in the midfield. There's just so many good things from this Chiefs team. It was awesome to see them come together, especially against NRG. Yeah, yeah, and it's something you don't get to see from their play, obviously, because they're just cars on a field. But when you meet them as people and you get to talk to them, they're some of the most critical players I've oh, ever yeah, met. Definitely. They know that they are some of the top players, if not the top players in the region, but they still don't feel like that's enough. They understand they still have gaps to close, they still have skills to learn, and they want to try and beat all these other teams out there. But they're so critical. Every time they take a loss, every time that they even come close, yeah. a game five victory to them still doesn't feel great because they know they've got to perform better. And that, I think, is what was such a huge push going from last season to this season and why they still improved so much. Yeah, they actually had, they came to me before their match against G2 and were like, what do we need to do? What's G2 playing like right now? What's the meta like in North America? We've been scrimming, but we haven't really got to see, you know, mm -hmm. too much of how they're playing coming into the land. And they told me, they're like, I think the bump game is going to be huge against G2. Mm. And it ended up working against them. We saw them really yeah. struggle. They just kind of forgot about staying aware. And they're like, oh, G2 won't go for bumps. We'll go for bumps on them. We saw G2 whip it out yeah. against them. And it was just awesome to see the teams actually going with game plans and trying to adapt to each other mid-series. This, this was the first win that an OCE team's ever gotten in the lower bracket, okay? Mm -hmm. this is, they, they've, after they had one win last season and then both teams dropped down and immediately lose. So they do that there. And then going up in their next matchup against Cloud9, they continued to show strength. This one, they went 3-1 is how it ended, but you wouldn't know that if you, it, wouldn't, it wasn't as close as it sounds. There's two of those three wins from Cloud9 went into overtimes that were just monstrous and so difficult. They were so close to getting the wins here, Chiefs were, as they took the team that ends up coming in third place to four games. I mean, remember when I said that every team is so good now and yeah. you don't really know who's going to win? Imagine in the lower bracket going back to back against NRG than Cloud9. <laughs> right? And that's the lower, lower bracket. bracket. This was both in the lower <laughs> bracket. These were elimination matches on day two. This wasn't even day three. So, I mean, just the fact that they had such a challenge ahead of them and they gave such a big fight. And Cloud9 was a team that we didn't get to see their really online presence which I'm really not surprised. They are all new to this kind of stage. You know, the RLCS I mean, stage is I don't so know if I would big. say we didn't see their online presence. They have been killing every other tournament. I think it was that just like, yo, you need to cool down sometime. Like, yeah. coming onto this new stage probably was, I think, a little bit overwhelming for them. That was a crazy crowd. Yeah, and, and we, did, uh, we didn't see the same passes that we'd seen in a Cloud9, right, right. but they still are just raw consistent enough to be able to still beat these teams on individual mm -hmm. and even two-man plays. They don't need to bring out the third there, yeah. as often. So, you know, I was looking for them to do a lot of those, you know, signature, insane, fast passing plays, and they did a couple, but it was always in one spurt in a series. Maybe, like, w maybe two games in a series, we'd see them execute it, when in reality, we We'd usually see it several times yeah. a game. But, I mean, that's that's to be fair. Everyone plays a little bit more safe when there's this much money on the line. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about it plenty, all the games we've casted Wave, is you always see teams playing just kind of awkward, mm. especially when it gets closer to the grand finals. Yeah. Everyone's playing just, a, like, it's harder to notice, but when you start realizing, like, oh, why is he dropping back so soon? Right? They don't want to turn around because all it takes is one stupid Tiny yeah. mechanical mistake, and no, you've given up a ten thousand dollar goal because now you're in second. Yeah, no, like, nobody that's wants. So nobody wants the, the exactly the ten thousand dollar fluke pinch, right? Yeah. So everyone is trying to stay out of there, and it is funny. Like the grand finals, I feel like this season we had probably the least defensive grand finals we've ever had yeah. at this point. We'll talk about that when we get there. Moving into day number three, G2 versus PSG. Now I'm excited about this. They're like PSG. Where like they, I picked them to win the whole thing, right? I thought that they would maybe go the whole distance. I've been a frontline and MPSG fan the whole season and really enjoying them. And this was a crazy match, them going up against the North American favorites. And G2, at this point, completely answering the questions, you know. Are they on? Are they off? Absolutely on fire as they knock out PSG. And PSG was an absolute treat to watch all season and still even coming into mm. land. 
they are very, very young. I mean, Fair is the oldest one on that roster. The next two are 15 and 16, respectively. And that is so much pressure. I'm sitting there and I'm watching these kids walk on stage. I'm like, I don't know what I'd do. I'm yeah. literally a decade older than one of these players. I'm not even that old. I would be full on panicking if I were these kids. And Bluey's so calm and collected when he walks on stage. He knows he's there to win. And shot that as well. For such young players, I think they really perform. Yeah, I would really agree with you. It's so difficult to play on that stage. I know from experience, it's so scary and intimidating, mm -hmm. really, just having the whole crowd there in front of you. And you can, like, see them erupt as you play. It, it's a skill in its own right, really, to kind yeah. of ignore the audience. Mm -hmm. And I think those players, like, it, you just really need another season to be able to try. And it kind of... It's similar to Cloud9 for me. These were the two teams that everybody expected to come in and just destroy the land, and both of them underperforming. I think age played a huge part. Yeah. It surprised me how, like, back in season three, Lance, seen Farah there for the first time, and he was engaging the crowd, standing up, like, trying to get people pumped, and you saw them at the end of some of their matches jumping up and hugging each other and almost falling off the stage because they're just, like, allowing themselves to express emotion, which is something that's so difficult for some of these players to do. And Farah, able to bring out the best in his two teammates there, the two younger players, was absolutely awesome to watch them play. But G2, showing that they wanted to be here and making top four, we had two North American teams in the lowers, we had two European teams in the uppers. That was the first time since season one, I think, maybe the first time ever we've had two North American teams in the top four. So that was great. And as we well, moving forward, the Gale Force versus Method in the upper finals. This, to me, was the match of the tournament. Yep. This was the craziest games. It went all the way to game seven. It was absolutely brilliant. Ending on just dynamite plays as Gale Force made it into the grand finals. Just looking at the play styles, I mean, if you just, even before going into this, I could tell you this would be a match for the ages. Just when you watch how Method play, just how creative they are at every single attempt they can make on net, just with the things that a lot can do on offense. And Gale Force, just their raw consistency, how good they are individually. You take any single player on that pitch, and they're unbelievable in any kind of game mode, any kind of match, any kind of pressure. They have a lot of experience behind them and a lot of skill. Yeah, this has actually just been an incredible year for both of these two teams. We saw them actually play the same matchup in 2v2, albeit, but in the Universal Open. Mm -hmm. That was also a Gale Force, or Gale Force versus Method mm -hmm. final. And, you know, if you saw that, you knew what was coming in this matchup. Two teams full of, like, fantastic defense, great passing plays, so much synergy between both these guys. I have to agree with you completely. This was the final for me, and it was going to be a matter of really who could, you know, just stay focused, you know, throughout the match longer, not give up that first goal. That seemed to be the big punching thing. But both teams able to strike back. I don't know. It was like an emotional roller coaster for me. Oh, for sure. And I, and I know for a while, you know, when you, when you, we watched Gale Force and we all kind of started to lose a little bit of faith in their dominance somewhere mm -hmm. in the season. Oh, they, were, they were quiet at the, at the start yeah. of the season for sure. And, but then they were able to get all the way, all the way to the finals there. Method having an absolutely just grueling run here oh, yeah. at the end of the day. They play the upper finals, go to game seven, have some massive overtimes. Then as they move into the lower finals against Cloud9, this one also going to six games. The overtimes that happened at this event, I'm pretty Pretty sure we had like five or six of the top ten longest overtimes in RLCS history just happen at this land because these teams were so close. But this is where North America's end run ended with Cloud9 coming in third place. That shot. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just the things that they can pull off. And as I said, this is when I was looking to see Cloud9 execute those really fast-paced passing plays and the high mechanical skill. I mean, we watched one of the best shots ever this series, one of the best shots yes. ever made in RLCS, and I'm sure we'll see it and yeah, any might, time during this. It might be next. No, okay. We'll, we'll see it at some point for sure. And we're going <laughs> to talk about it at length today. Yeah. So if, you, if you're waiting for us to talk about the squishy goal, don't worry. You won't get your full here on overtime. But my goodness, that was where Cloud9 ended. Method now, having played 13 games straight, moves into the grand finals. And this is where the road, I feel like the energy maybe just sort of started to run out. And we'll get, we'll get Metzenaris' thoughts on this later on today because we're going to interview him. But here, the first time we've actually had a sweep in the grand finals of RLCS. I mean, it had to be grueling. Just the amount of time they spent on stage with audiences. They had just played against Cloud9, so mm. the crowd was kind of against them. And that does play a bit of a factor. And then to know that you're going against a relaxed, ready, and lossless Gale Force Esports that you had just lost to and barely lost to yeah. as well. I mean, I, I can't imagine just what was against them in their own heads. Yeah, there's so many games I think this Method team played in, and it's just absolutely, you know, oh, mind-numbing <laughs> how how difficult it is to play, what, 14 games or something? Some crazy, absurd number they played on stage on that day number 17. three. 17 games, thank you. That like, That is just really such a difficult run for them to make, and, mm -hmm. you know, you saw the Method boys afterwards. 
they were so happy just even be playing against Gale Force. They were all great friends. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like a happy moment, I think, for Rock. Uh, Gale Force, just... <sighs> We talked about at the beginning of the season, they were the all-star team, they came together, we were like, is this team gonna be able to do it? They all forfeited their automatic berth into the season four so that they could play together. They had to come through the qualifiers and they come out here as champions, Turbo Pulsa, the first player to ever win two lands and he does it back to back here in season three and season four, the two-time 2017 and 2017 champion, Turbo Pulsa. I mean, even if you talk about the mental struggles that Method had to go through, it doesn't matter. No one would have beat Gale Force in that yeah. final series. They were so <laughs> clean. I like how we spend so much time talking about Method here, yeah. you know, because it's like such a crazy story, them having to go through all those plays, 17 games back to back, when it was just complete annihilation from Gale Force here in the finals. They should, I mean, they just, they don't mess up. No matter how much pressure's on them, they don't mess up. They have so much experience in general and just as a team, individually, I can, no matter what team you've seen them in the last four seasons, no matter where you've seen these players, they have have proven that they can be the best and now they finally came together and did it as a team. Yeah, seriously, such an incredible performance from all teams involved, especially Method and most of all, Gale Force, congrats to the two-time Turbo. Yeah, I, these, <laughs> I mean, we've now, as you mentioned, the Universal Open earlier, the, two v, the biggest 2v2 tournament and the biggest 3v3 tournament of the year, both finals were Gale Force Esports versus Method. If that's, if, if you need any more evidence that there's a changing of the guard happening here in Rocket League, there's new faces taking over. So many of our old, like, standard Titans didn't even make it to land in this season. So, absolutely crazy stuff. I can't wait to see where Rocket League goes next. I mean, we finally just got Kronobi back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that took three seasons. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping we went in. <laughs> oh, really? Savage That's stuff fine. there from Quinn Lobdell. <laughs> Folks, when we come back, I'm going to interview Metzenars and hear his thoughts on the finals. It was his first land. What's he going to think about that one? We'll find out here after the break when we come back to overtime. <laughs> Overtime, folks, wrapping up season four here. We've had our world championship, we've had our finals, we've crowned our champion, and kind of the, the, the season is over here for 2017, but we still got lots of stuff to talk about, players to talk to, and one of the players we want to talk to today, Metzenaris from Method. We got to see them play and they came in, in second there at the world finals. Metzenaris, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for talking to us again. We've talked to you before here, and, and last time we talked to, me, talked to you, you told me that your expectations for Season 4 were to make it to land and to play your best. Now, obviously, you made it to land, and after losing in the Grand Finals, you tweeted that you, you were sad, that you, you couldn't say that you weren't sad, and that you were, but you had to be proud of the second place at the World Championships. Do you feel that you played your best? Uh... 
I think we could have won the whole thing, so not as good as it could have been, but definitely not bad, I guess. Yeah. So would you say that you you succeeded in your season four goals, or you still you still you're still but you're still hungry for that victory? Yeah, I want to, to lift the trophy at some point. Yeah, well, you guys, are, you guys have been so close. You've played against Gale Force twice now in Grand Finals here in 2017. We'll talk about that some more later. But I, I just want to, like, back up for a second. This is your first time at RLCS season, at RLCS LAN as a competitor. This is, all of you were LAN rookies here for the first time. Like, just, just talk to me about the experience. What was the RLCS LAN like for you? It was, like, one of the best experiences in my life. It was so awesome to see all the Rocket League people, like, players, staff. Fans, viewers, like, just meeting everyone was so incredible. For sure. That's one of the things that everyone says every time that we have a LAN. Is like it almost feels like a family reunion because we all talk to each other online, but then we actually get to see each other and hang out, and it's really fun. Um, what, what Was there, other than, you know, the community, was there any, like, real big noticeably differences between this LAN and previous LANs you'd been to? I mean, obviously, this LAN was way bigger than any LAN I've been to, so just... The crowd is way bigger. Everything is like the production is way bigger than any other tournament. So it's like playing on a higher level, I guess. For sure. I mean, and other than the 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 Universal Open is the other big land that you guys got to come over to, and you made it all the way to the finals, played against Gale Force there, and that was a two v two scene. But you guys in other lands that have been three v three have actually struggled to make it anywhere in those tournaments, and here making it all the way to the finals. Was there was there a weight lifted off of Method's shoulders to have in a three v three format to make it all the way there? I don't feel like we've done that bad in three v three, on like if you count out like three Mac which was our first ter LAN tournament ever. Okay. So it was like, we've been practicing this whole time to get better at LAN, and we have a lot of LAN practice, so I don't feel like we had anything to prove, but we just wanted to show who we actually are. We're not that bad at LAN. It was just like having that rough start with no LAN experience. For sure, yeah. And so you got those land, some land experience out and get the jitters out before and they were just able just to perform here. Was was the size of the crowd or like the crowd here in this particular venue, did that have any big effect on the way you guys got to play? I don't think the crowd affected us at all, I think. It was like, I was at least I was focusing on the game and like the series is so hard. I didn't even notice the crowd and the headsets were great at the land, so I couldn't even really hear the crowd, except when Squishy uh, scored a goal. <laughs> for sure. It was a very North American favored crowd. But one thing that was actually fun for me, I didn't actually cast the finals or anything. I didn't have any like role on the final match. And so I got to just go sit in the crowd with Quinn Lobdell and watch the games happen. And so many fans around were rallying behind you guys. They're like, we have two European teams, no North American team to cheer for. And a lot of the crowd was cheering for you guys. You definitely made a lot of fans at this event. And, and talking about specifically that final day, between the upper, the lower, and the grand final, which you played in all of, you had to play 17 games straight. Just an absolute marathon of a day. Many of them going to lengthy overtimes. How did endurance and stamina start to play a factor as the games just kept going and going? I mean, obviously, we started feeling tired the more we played, but I mean, shouldn't really affect us too much. Like, uh, the last series definitely was a bit of, like, Tiredness, mm -hmm. but what can you do? Was that was there any? Maybe it was the tiredness. Was there any like big noticeable difference for you between the upper finals against Gale Force, which went to seven games, and the grand finals, which were the sweep? Well, like the upper finals, everyone was fresh going in. Everyone was playing great Rocket League, and in the grand final, it was like they were playing out of their minds, and we were like. Kind of meh, so. Sure. Well, listen, you, you, you had already played some, I mean, you played 11 games against Gale Force that day. We were sitting there talking about it at, right as the grand finals were about to start, that like if you guys had managed to send it to game seven and get the bracket reset and then go to game seven again, you would have played 21 games that one day. It could have been just an absolute marathon. But, you know, it, it, it's, 
it was great to see the match go the way it did. And, and going back to what you talked about earlier, like your favorite part of LAN was just that you get to meet all these people and stuff. You know, one of the best parts of LAN in just general is the social gatherings and the memories that are made. Was there any, like, special fond memory for you outside of the Rocket League off the stage, you know, kind of a behind-the-scenes memory that people maybe didn't get to see? For me, like, one of the best memories was after the grand finals, everyone was, like, coming out of the cinema and everything. Mm. Uh, so we were going to our hotel room. So we step out of the cinema, and, like, uh, there is a lot of people outside the cinema, and they just started clapping when we come out and ask for pictures and signatures, and that really made my day. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's so much fun because they do like they have to leave the venue, but then like the fans will just all pool outside the doors and just wait for the players to come out. You guys like have to come out that way too. Like and you're like, oh, I just want to get to my room and like relax, but then there's like a line of people to try and get there. Was that was that your first time like having that sort of like lines of people asking for signatures experience? Yeah, this was definitely the most people asking for signatures and pictures, but I had like some. Mm -hmm. in the past but i've never played in such a big tournament with such a big crowd so obviously obviously it's uh, way bigger for sure and you, you talked about you know wanting to come to land here improve yourself and you did just that and honestly you weren't able to beat gale force despite going up against 11 games against them that day but this year has just seen this gradual transition, this gradual changing of the guard in Rocket League with, you know, the many great names that we have stood there since the beginning falling to new names, you know, such as yourselves. And in the largest 2v2 and 3v3 tournaments we've talked about already, it's been Gale Force versus Method every time. And nobody can deny that you two are the most successful squads in Rocket League right now. How does that change your mentality right now is, is with the world expecting stuff out of you now? I think it's a good thing for us since like people actually think we're good now so we don't have to prove ourselves we can just do our best and play our game that's awesome it's good i like that it doesn't add a lot you're not saying it adds pressure that it's just it you just are able to just play your game now that you know that people are expecting what you expect out of yourself and and we talked about you know last interview we talked about your expectations for season four and how you know how much you you feel like you've met them what are your expectations now looking forward to season five well, every season forward from now, I just want to win the championship. Makes sense. Just got to just pull it out. That's the, the, the only thing you haven't done at this point, I feel like, is actually get the defeat. Do you feel any sort of, I know you're good friends with the Gale Force guys. Is there any sort of rival, like healthy rivalry between you guys is now that they've been like right there in your way every time? I mean, Gale Force has always been like our number one opponent and like, we always scream Gale Force the most. We all almost like every time we met meet them in tournaments and we played them against like so many times, so it's always been a kind of rivalry with them. That's awesome. Well it's cool to see these new stories showing up, these new faces coming and just making you know brand new dynasties here in Rocket League. Mezonaris, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Any shout outs you got before I let you go? Uh I shout out at uh, a lot of people last time, so I'll just go without shout outs this time. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Love it, man. Thank you so much for taking the, talk, taking the time to talk to us. Good luck in the rest of Rocket League. Thank you. Awesome. That's Metzenars there from Method. Great to talk to the players here. And we've got a lot more fun stuff to do here on RLCS Overtime as far as the Season 4 LAN went. We're going to talk about the top 10 plays. When we come back, you're going to take a quick break. We're going to break down all of the crazy, nutty goals that happened over that weekend. We'll see you after the break.
Welcome back to Overtime. Just got done talking. That's all. It's always good to hear from the players here. And now, to break down the top 10 plays that happened at LAN. Oh my goodness. The thing about LAN is that it's always like, we talked about this a little bit in the top of the show, about how it's always so defensive. It's always such a, such a like, everyone's terrified, so everyone like prioritizes defense more and stuff. So you don't get maybe as many nutty goals as you do during league play when everyone's a little bit more loose. I feel like we have plenty of fantastic nutty goals this season. I mean, I think it's probably the, the most, um, what's what I'm looking for, I guess, mechanically advanced land uh, performances at a team. So this I, is the best there's a better way to players have ever played. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. that Ever. makes sense. It's been more seasons. It's a little generic. Every, every but season that should happen, we should get better, hopefully. Right. But this, I mean, they really did show it, though. Like, every single team seriously bringing out their specialty at least some point at land, even if not as consistently and online, which is totally normal and totally expected. They still all at least reminded us, like, oh, yeah, that's what they did all season. Yeah, I feel like we had just about every type of goal happen that could yeah. possibly happen it was absolutely bonkers we're going to take a look at the top 10 plays here folks and just you know, give a reaction i know what's coming these guys don't know what's coming so you get to get their genuine reaction start off here with magnus just going for the monster oh. plays that was that was the uh, the magnificent pass oh yeah carpet. who said that i said that yeah oh, how can i forget? <laughs> i actually blacked well, it out did you guys pass that. that together that pass was <laughs> stupid <laughs> I think the weirder part is like, why was he, why was he so far to the right? He was so wide, ready for that pass. Well, yeah, I mean, he saw the space there. The goal is you, you've already missed, there. you've already missed the next one here. Watch, watch Kate. Now we get so distracted. It's just out and then turns around in the air, and you know, oh. this those, continues. Those are always so good because just to be able to like calculate how much boost necessary to stop your car mm. mid air perfectly like that, the change in acceleration is insane. All right, this one's more about the time on the clock. You know, we're at zero seconds, and it's all tied up, but now the game's over. Look at Kronovi's zero-second goal. I mean, I remember this goal was like the last 20 seconds was what made it so important. They all yeah. really, really showed up. But that pass all the way down and the control. I think it was Jnaps. I can't really see his name. Really Kronovi. No, no, the control on the ground. No, I didn't know. I think it was Jnaps. I think it was Jnaps, yeah. And then he got the flick over the last event. Yeah, that yeah. control was huge. All right, so this one, oh, this was this such, a, such a crazy goal. This was against Pale Horse and just absolutely brutalizing CJ and Net here as very big drops on top of them. Like, this is so feels bad, man. Look, he yeah. just gets like this triple touch. <laughs> just, and the defender, like, he's already coming out of the goal because there's no way you can imagine that ball dropping in above you. I mean, there's, nope. there's no world. If you're not on the backboard, that's going in. All right, now, this is all about defense here. We got Squishy two times here in our top oh. ten. You know the other one's coming, but he's not done. Oh. Oh, yet. Oh, Keeps on going God. away. And then they'll carry that one out. Absolutely monster defense from Pogba. It's the recovery. Just yeah. Watch how well he recovers from this. He manages to get himself on the top so that his wheels hit. It's and then watch him. He's laying so yeah. It's the <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> I'm <laughs> scared. Magnus <laughs> off the wall. Oh, this was so yeah. gross. No this space. was so for me, gross. For me, this was probably like. I thought this was like maybe the second best goal because you saw, he knew what was happening. He's he like, oh. kept driving and he boosted oh. to get there in time. So nasty. And to be able to trap the ball like that, that is so difficult. Like any player who, who's a cherry picker in rank knows. I mean, you're, uh, you're back to second. <laughs> this is basically the second time we've seen Fairy Peak pull off basically the same play. He gets this, this waterfall pass here, just rolls it around, puts it out the pass. This was the this was one of the few things that I watched live and I'm like, what on earth did he do? <laughs> like, how did you read that? Hey, like, you yeah. don't. You don't read that. <laughs> You're, you're just fairy peak. That's no, how right. you do hey, it. Hey, hey, this is hey, OCE play, the top 10 and the top oh, three, actually. There's the so double dirty. tap. I was this? Like, earlier when we were like, you know, have we seen every type of goal? I was like, did we have a double tap? And I remember, no, Jake totally got well, a double well, tap. No, this, watch, watch him. Ready? He's like, down. It's going down. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> That's like the one part of the field that nobody's mastered. Like, yeah. nobody predicts those kinds of shots because it's so mm. inconsistent. It's like, see, Jake, go for that? This was the uh, winning goal of the tournament here from KDOP. You see six minutes of overtime on the clock. And this is the goal that gave them that world championship title. I mean, just controlling in the corner. Violent Panda, a huge part of the play, which is what makes that team so freaking good, is that they all work so well together. Oh! oh this, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the greatest greatest goal. Pay attention! Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> greatest goal in our LCS history. The bait on this goal is just insane. <gasps> It's the fake. Oh, no. Oh, it's so <laughs> dirty. It's so disgusting. Like, I remember when it happened. I usually, like, whenever I see someone fall off the ceiling, my mind is always like, I need to get ready for a ceiling shot. Start just getting, in case. Get ready to get excited. This could be nuts. But when I saw two defenders, how squishy, my mind literally said, there's no way mm -hmm. he's going to make this. So there's no point in, oh, my God, he just made it. Yeah. Like, it was the dumbest thing I've ever watched. I, I felt so bad for everyone around me because I was screaming. I was going yeah. crazy when I go because how can you even conceptualize yeah. that fake? Oh, it's just... I almost I almost punched the keyboard. So when I have it, yeah. I was with you. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh God, 
I, and I freaked out when I watched it happen because I was so unprepared to watch Squishy actually pull that off at land. Actually pulls it off. He, he didn't. In, in, he did not invent the shot. As you've said in the call. He invented it competitively. But he invented the, yes, he is the one who debuted the shot competitively, which is exactly what Carpenter was meaning. He implemented it. He implemented He actually showed that it was practical, that yeah. you could actually do it. And it was absolutely bonkers to watch. Still can't believe he actually pulled that off. In a, in a top three in the world scenario, this is not against some, like, crappy yep. team, you know, that's, like, having a bad day. Like, no. This is against Method. Yeah. The number two team. Yeah, the number well, two team. Just to remind you guys, they were down as well by two goals. He scored two yes. other insane goals like by himself to be able to bring them back into that game. Mm. That's what made it so crazy. It was just okay. like the squishy shot. So here's the thing. It was a great goal. If you want to see more about this goal, don't worry. We got you covered. We're going to break this goal down in full when we come back. going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here at Overtime. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to RLCS Overtime. It's me, Final Carpet, and I'm here to break some stuff down. We had some incredible plays throughout land, some of the best individual player performances that I think I've ever seen out of anyone at such a competitive stake. But one that is definitely to mention, Squishy Muffin's shot against Method, something that I think is etched in everyone's brains, the loudest I've ever heard a live audience go, and we're just going to kick it right off the bat. Squishy Muffins. He couldn't do it alone. He did it alone, but he did have some support. So something that was really obvious, not obvious, I guess I should say, really, um, easy to forget is that he did have Torment here. Torment was there getting ready for their pass, so he's squishy. He's essentially, his thought process is, okay, what do I do? Keep my options open. I'm gonna try and center it for a teammate, maybe take a shot. And then he also wants to go up the ceiling to give him an option of a delayed flip. But he also had a challenge from a lot. So a lot's the one that kind of started him, started Squishy's momentum. A lot needed a challenge this or else Squishy would just have all the room to play. You see how far Magnus is on the other side of the pitch. So he needed to challenge it, and I think that was probably a good idea. A little further than he'd like to be, but he still forced Squishy Muffins to make some sort of decision. Sadly, it'd be the best decision he ever made in his entire life. We're going to see Squishy come off the ceiling. He makes that delayed decision. He doesn't want to be able to get contested, and the reason you fall off the ceiling is so that you have that delayed flip. For those of you that have never seen it before, understand the mechanic. If you fall off of a surface or you push off of a surface, you have a flip whenever you want. You can use it whenever. Usually you have a certain amount of time from when you jump, but if you fall off a surface, that is not the case. So Squishy Muffin sees Magnus is coming up to him, and we'll get to see it from his perspective soon enough. Don't you worry your pretty little heads. You're gonna see Magnus come and try and contest it, and you have Metzonaris over here trying to push this across. He wants to cover the angles. They attack it as a two-man team, but they don't want to double commit. It doesn't matter though, Squishy's gonna delay this touch as much as he can, get the flip, and you can see Mets just a deer in the headlights. There is absolutely nothing he can do. 
but when we watch it from Squishy's perspective, you'll actually notice, honestly, there's really not he could have done, even if he had tried his hardest, they would have had to do something incorrect. So you'll notice, what is Squishy's thought process coming here? He's got someone on the backboard, he's got Magnus trying to save Boost, trying to get the momentum and come across, and he's got Metanaris over here down on the back corner. They want to cut off as many angles to the shot and they don't want to double commit. So what do you do? You have Magnus is going to come up first. When Squishy keeps dragging this out, you'll have Magnus come up first to try and do it. He wants to cut off as many angles as possible. So what is he doing right now? Well, he expects Squishy to take the shot. He knows he's going for a ceiling shot, getting the delayed flip. So he wants to cut off as much angle as possible. So he's going to fly across in front of him, assuming Squishy will flip it down into it. And then Metanaris is doing the same. So if you want to talk about essentially angles on the net that Squishy has right now. so. Right now, open and available to him, you want to go either behind Metanaris over there, or maybe somewhere up over here, essentially right behind his, his car, where you can't see. Now, getting it over there behind Metanaris, he, even Metz knows that's not very possible with the angle that he has, even with that delayed flip. But little did he know that he'd somehow be able to find this angle behind Magnus. So watching Magnus fly across to Kingdom Come, he doesn't know what's happening, but Metz didn't have a choice, right? You don't want to double commit, because the moment you double commit is the moment that you leave it wide open for, remember, as you noticed, Torment, I didn't cover him earlier, but he's coming in from the middle. He's ready and waiting for either a 50-50 here or a pass off from Squishy, but Squishy saw the opportunity. So Metz waited. The moment that Magnus flew across, Metz knew he had to start this jump. But if you'll notice that the way Squishy attacked this ball, the way he came at it, he's now getting underneath it. When previously they all looked at him, he was above the ball, he would only be able to strike it down at the net. Now he's actually managed to boost his car underneath it, be upside down, so his first flip is actually going to shovel it up, and he actually will keep the altitude on the ball when you watch him take this shot directly at the net into the corner. So there's really, in the scheme of playing Rocket League at the tier that we know, there's not a lot Metanaris could have done because he needed to wait for Magnus to come across, and Magnus needed to try and pull a decision out of Squishy. When you watch the replay, you'll get to see the audience's reaction a bit in this. Squishy just waiting as patiently as possible, and with this much on the line, I cannot believe he had that in him. You see everyone's minds get absolutely blown. I remember when I saw this come on the screen, this kid who was just, he was speechless. He had no idea what was going on. The loudest I've ever heard a live audience was when he made this goal. Whether you're a fan of Method or a fan of Cloud9, everyone's a fan of incredible Rocket League plays, and this was just some of the coolest things to see. Now, if we watch that again from the beginning all the way through with no stops, you can just see how flawless, beautiful, it flowed so well. I don't want to. I don't need to talk it up anymore. You guys can do it yourself. Well, after Magnus flew past it, I think Metanaris knew exactly what was going to happen. There's nothing he could do about it. Metanaris knew. But even going, even as their opponents, I'm pretty sure Method had immense amounts of respects. Everyone understood how much skill that took, and to be able to execute that at land of all places in a potential elimination match for yourself. He had support if he needed to. He did have torment at the midfield, but it doesn't matter. Squishy did it all on his own. Now, we're going to go on a quick break, but when we come back, myself, Quinn Lobdell, and Wei Punk are going to reminisce a bit of the fun memories of this last land, so don't go anywhere.
<laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to RLCS Overtime. It's been a great show. It's been a great show. It's been a great season of Rocket League here in season four. And just, you know, like, reminisce with me here about things that have happened. Talk about the land. Talk about, we can talk about the whole season if you want to. I just like this. We just, we just want to talk about the cool things that have happened here over this season as it's been so much fun for all of us. I mean, one of the biggest things for me, and I realize it now, especially, is that things are way cooler when there's a couple thousand people screaming and cheering. Mm. Really quiet in this room, and I miss it. Yeah. I wish we had a couple thousand people here hanging out yelling at us. Yeah, that's his. That's his hint that our that overtime like season two will have a live studio yeah. audience. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that would actually be really today. fun. Foreshadowing. <laughs> That'd be really fun. That's totally not a thing, by the way. But I, I would. I'd be totally down for that. No, but yeah, it was awesome. At least for me, first time as a caster going out there mm -hmm. and just like being able to like experience it and actually cast the games because casting's fun, but like. When you get into those hype RLCS matches, like actually witnessing it in front of you and trying to describe what's going on, it gets tough, okay? Mm -hmm. All the haters, <laughs> it's a hard job. I, I, Not as easy as you thought. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there really is just something unique about when, when you get to experience a game with others. You know, mm -hmm. usually it's just me and Wave or, or me and you or, or whoever's next to me. Uh, yeah, we get to do it, but it's it's... I don't know. It's a lot different when the whole community is experiencing with you and you hear that. Mm -hmm. like just the roar that overcomes you when you see something nuts, and so did they. Everybody can agree this is a really crazy moment. We're yeah. all getting excited about yeah. it. And like, I have a harder time, I don't say concentrating, but like keeping my head on target because I want to live the moment so bad. But totally. at the same time, I have a job to do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> land, it's been fun to watch the way that the players, some of the players have like loosened up more and more as they've gotten into land. Take a look at, uh, at Rizzo. He finally, like, we were there, they were all, like, you know, slow movements here. Like, the way they, they came out, they came out, and they're like, oh, what are they doing? They're, they're standing still. And then they, oh, there's a wave, and oh. It's, 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 the it's a nice, nice, nice. I don't even know how he does this. It's like, I was actually it's like a standing impressed. up worm. I'm not gonna lie. If, if I had to pick yeah, which man. of those players could dance on that team, <laughs> I don't think I'd pick any of them, to be honest. But the fact that Rizzo is like, oh, a look at the slow mo. Oh, look at him. <laughs> This is pretty strange. He just like, kind of looks at him like, what are you doing over there? It's like, it's like he's twerking with every part of his body except, except for his butt. <laughs> he's just, just, just moving around. I, I, LAN was so much fun. I think uh, my favorite part of this LAN in particular, because of where they had the desk, was the signs. Mm -hmm. And like everything, everyone's like, we can actually, because you literally could just go stand and be like right behind people. And it was, it was nice. And luckily, nobody really tried to be mean or like do too much. Like it was, people were generally pretty controlled. Don't no like to like jump up on the stage or something like that. There's, there's a picture that from LAN of somebody holding up a sign like, where's Leaf? And Leaf is like standing like, four feet from him, yeah. pointing at Lawler, and Lawler's like <laughs> pointing back at him and stuff like that. It was just like this like really cool moment and everything. I loved all the signs. What were y'all's favorite signs? I mean, I, I think my favorite was the dudes that were playing Rocket League on a surface. <laughs> <laughs> they were just straight up playing Rocket League because I, I think it was the more creative ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were people that were holding up signs and there were some dudes that were just like, it's my face, look. Yep. They just wanted to be in the camera <laughs> shot. They're like, it's me. Yep. I'm like, sit down, at least be creative, make me laugh. <laughs> but the dudes that were just straight up playing Rocket League, he's like, he was trying to look at the, like, the comp monitor because he couldn't see it and he was trying to actually <laughs> roll around and he was like l disconnecting so he's rubber banding a bunch mm -hmm. it was really fun to watch the, the funniest moment for me and I don't know like the logistics of it or like how it's done but the guy eating the cup of noodles in the audience like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you get up and cheer and scream with like a bowl of hot ramen but yeah. it was great that, that risk. I was dying that's, that's, risk and reward exactly yeah, but he, gets, he gets to eat noodles there in the audience I loved the, the, the top 10 anime betrayals that was amazing yeah. and the guy there was the guy that had the sign where you hold up the thought bubble next to Axel Toss and said like thinking about Gibbs. Yeah. And then they like wipe to like, you know, like some some replay or something like that. And then they come back and the signs the other way around. It's like I'm also thinking about Gibbs if it's pointing to Gibbs's head. Like people got <laughs> really creative with the signs here. I think once they noticed it was a thing, they all went home after yeah. day one. They were like, what can we do? <laughs> And then they had to get there early because those seats were usually the first ones to fill up, like right behind the desk because everyone oh, yeah. wants their, they want to get their five minutes of I camera time. I saw people like fighting to get into that yeah. front. Audience. Those that the guys that did the crazy. backflip. Oh, some dude just did the flip. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. If, did you see the guy that like just sprinted across and stole some dude's hat? But he was like <laughs> in a full-fledged sprint. Like it was so fast, I didn't think he could get that kind of speed inside I of the venue. This. It was like there was a dude with, with like the Captain Daddy hat on and he was just hanging out. I'm assuming they were his friend because you don't, you don't just steal from people you don't know. You don't steal from people you know. <laughs> Never mind. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Who do you but steal anyways, from also I just see like, <laughs> like this dude just whizzes on by and rips his hat off some guy who's like, looks really confused. But it was so fast that I was like, 
where did he get the speed? Like, mm. what? How much room is in this venue? Did you see the guy, the guy doing the the classic, like taking off his shoe and using it as a cell phone? Yeah. Walking down. I saw that happen live, and I was like, I bet that. That happened last season. It was incredible. Yeah. He was like doing this, and then he pointed to his friend and gave it to his friend. Yeah. Like, they, it was like a two-minute <laughs> bit with a shoe phone. It was oh, actually the, incredible. The, the, the crowd was great. There was so many good things that happened with this crowd reaction and stuff. But there was also some really great moments of emotion from the players mm -hmm. getting to watch Fair and PSG. We talked about it earlier. The way that they just like were so he. He brings out emotion out of the players on the stage. They, they like basically tackles them off the stage at one point. I feel like I saw a few players like kind of tripping on that those platforms there. But uh, yeah, they were gonna you know just just down there. There it is. There it is. Jumping up. No regard. Just, just, just I mean this is pure celebration no, right No here. idea where he is. <laughs> doesn't care. You don't need to care. The funny thing is we, we hand <laughs> down the game. <laughs> <laughs> he picks up Louis, gets shot, then just brings all of yeah. them off the stage. It's funny, That's like so good. In in the notes, it's it's fair tackled by team, but I'm pretty sure it's fair tackling, tackling his team. Like, grabbing Farrah them brings team and down and with him. Yeah, yeah. Did you, I don't know if you saw, but PSG like tweeted that out, and yeah. Fair was like, "Take this down, please." And then PSG's like, "If you win." <laughs> yeah. That was actually pretty really? good. A little banter that. with the great. It was pretty funny. Yeah, no. One of, okay, one of my favorite moments was we, we talked about Chiefs and like the crazy run they had, and Yummy Cheese Man's like whole thing is to be the voice that's like go OC always. Ways. And when it came to the lower bracket match against NRG, he actually predicted NRG to take the victory, and then Chiefs knocks them out, and it was crazy and the biggest upset, right? And then they interviewed Jake afterwards and asked him what he thought about Yummy's betrayal on the he desk. He predicted you guys to lose. Do you have any words for the traitorous Yummy Cheese? I'd like to thank Yummy because his disbelief in us inspired us to prove him wrong and make him look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! You deserve it! He took yes, his headset off, he's trying to come over to the, oh, yeah. stage. the camera. Sit down. He was so ready to say it too. Let's he knew he was like, I'm gonna throw Tax him under the bus Tassi. so hard very, right now. I, 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 Yummy afterwards on the desk was like, that, that's, that's what the world wow. championship sad. is about. <laughs> Yummy, take it away, man. I'm not sad. The Chiefs just took down the he's North trying to American trying to champion. Cover it up here. I, mean, I, I feel like at some point he was like, also like, I need to go get on my plane and leave proved. before yeah. people come again, to assassinate me here. <laughs> no, I think he was joking. Yeah, I can't. He's like, he said, I can't go home. Just, just oh yeah, because yeah. I'll probably get like, I'll get. I, they're not going to take me back. Lay the smack down. I'll go straight to my dressing room. I'm back home to Australia. What? I gotta get out of here. It was the young, the the OCE players. We talked about how. Like a lot of times, the, the players who come to land for the first time will be like really quiet and stuff like that. Almost always, you'll meet them. You'll be like, "Hi, I'm Wei Feng," you know, and they'll be like, mm, I was "Like, I don't know any player named mm, like who who are you?" You know. But the OC, <laughs> like CJ, CJ walks in, be like, "Hi, how's it going, mate?" And it's like just shows straight up and just like yeah. have great conversations. Very personable players. I mean, the competitive attitude of the region is just a little more positive and a, I don't want to say laid back because, as I said, they're some of the most critical players I've met are actually from the OCE region. But there's something about their ability to understand, like, yes, this is competition but I love that I get to do this and I love what I'm doing and just their air to just have some fun they're always cheeky with each other making fun of each other when I was doing the interviews for uh, Pale Horse they all in their own individual interview called themselves the carry to like make fun of their teammates <laughs> but like each of them were like you know if it, if it wasn't for me they wouldn't get anywhere and everyone's like yeah the other guys really rely on me to keep the team together yeah. like they all <laughs> called themselves the carry and they knew they were just doing it out of fun but the ability to like kind of do that like take yourself seriously but also understand that you're here because you love it I think at that region, I mean, it's a huge advantage for them, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think they have such a stressful qualification coming even into yeah. the RLCS. Yeah. It's insane yeah. for them. I think they just come in so much more lighthearted, just happy to be a Everything part. they do is on land, right? Like, yeah. basically all of their competitions happen on land. So they are maybe even more experienced than some of the other regions at just talking to people because they have to be around people during competitions, right? But one of the, the most special moments, I think, from land was at the end, and it was all over, Gale Force had won. We had our two-time back-to-back champion here of Turbo Pulsa, and he's awarded the MVP medal, but then he sees and he says, like, I, he felt like it was in a gesture. He didn't deserve it, and he wanted to give it to his teammate, Kate Up. It was a very special moment. As I, I, want, I want to listen to it. We give it up for Gale Force Esports. <laughs> Your season four champions. And we have to award an MVP. And I couldn't think of a better person to award an MVP to than Mr. <laughs> Two-time two champion, Turbo Pulsa. Congratulations. You're 
Why you not to smile after that? Like, it's just like, just be stoic. Or not to cry. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would be <laughs> falling right now. I would be, <laughs> his beard would be Honestly, soaked with tears. Honest. Yeah. Listen, He's got, is he both the medals are smiling? I want to hear what he says. You're like kind of a demigod at this point. Panda, you're the you're the leader. You're the one who keeps him going. Turbo, though, this is your second championship, man. How do you feel? Uh, I have no words, like, to be honest. I feel like Kato should have the MVP award, to be honest. Well, you know what? You could do whatever it is you want to do with the MVP. If you want to give it to Kato, by all means, go ahead. Uh, yeah, look at that. He's gonna, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. He calls the boy. Calls him Bob. He calls him Bob. You can do it if you want. You know what? Everyone is an MVP. You're it's funny because it almost sounded like it was. Said, oh, it almost look at made that. it look staged. It almost yeah. was like, like, oh, you can actually do whatever you want with the medal. If you want to give it to him, hint, hint, kind of yeah. thing. But it wasn't at all. Like, the, that was a completely genuine moment from Turbo Pulsa just honoring his team. I mean, it shows just how close all those players are. And, I mean, Turbo, being at a loss for words is pretty big for him. I know he likes to talk. Uh, he's one of the more entertaining players. I, I mean, if, if you want to find some Twitter business. Mm. You follow that dude on Twitter, all right? Mm. You will get anywhere from drama to funny stuff to who knows what. Mm -hmm. He's an entertaining person, but to see him speechless, you know it really meant a lot to him. Yeah, he was so happy on that stage, and you could see he was tweeting out afterwards, like, what a year, mm -hmm. going from, what, last season one RLCS to being able to be the first two-time totally. back to back? Yeah. 2017, 2017. That's my favorite part about that little line there. <laughs> Guys, it's been a great episode of Overtime here. We've out of time. We could talk about this stuff all day, but we have to end this one here. It's been a great season of RLCS in general. Quinn, it's been great to have you along for the ride. Hope you get to stay here. It's been great. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Quinn Lob. Thank you. Quinn Lobdell, Michael Baruzzi, whatever you want to call him there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been great. We'll have a few more episodes of Overtime here, so stick around. But for me and the other boys here on the desk, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.